So the online course space gets a lot of hate and honestly, it's for good reasons. There's a lot of shady stuff going on out there, but something I think a lot about is how to do this ethically. And the reason I think about that is I don't think this is going away. I think it's just really early. I think that courses just have a lot of maturing to do and the people that offer them have a lot of maturing to do and the whole space just needs to evolve to a, something a little bit different than where we're at now. But what I wanna discuss in this video is why some are so bad and what I think are some of the solutions to that. How can you sell courses ethically. And for full transparency, this is coming from the perspective of somebody that does offer a course. I do sell a course, but it was not without a lot of fighting with myself about how do I do this in a way that I feel good about. And there are still a lot of ups and downs. There's times where I just think, I don't even wanna play in this space because it's just so negative and there's so much crap going around all the time. But I think we're, I think we're pointing towards a more ethical, a more um, not so slimy world of course sales in the future, hopefully. And one last caveat, I don't want this to come across as, oh, look at me, I figured out how to do this right, I'm the only good guy. That is not what I'm saying at all. There's things I've done wrong, there's things other people that are, are doing that are fantastic as well, but, and some of these things will hinder your sales as a course seller. So this is not even necessarily a great ROI thing to, to implement necessarily, which is a shame, but um, I'm I'm not the expert. I have not sold millions and millions of dollars of courses like many have. Okay, getting straight into it. First off, goes without saying, the person selling, offering, teaching something should obviously have some level of expertise in the thing that they are talking about. To some level, you don't need to be the world's best at the thing. I, I don't think that is absolutely necessary, but you do need to know what you're talking about. For example, I am not going to offer a stock trading course anytime soon because my very limited dabbling in stock trading has only been losses. So you don't see me just going out and taking somebody else's, copying it, spinning it, and then throwing it up three days later as a, a course for 997. Don't do that. So getting into the real points, a lot of these will fall into the category of who are they targeting and how are they selling it? So I think that kind of sums up where a lot of the problems are coming from. So first off, a lot of the bad players will overpromise. They will say, you will 100% achieve this, this, this. It will be on this exact timeline, uh, downplaying the risks, downplaying the, the downsides, just not even talking about the downsides, only talking about the positives. And of course, it's great to excite people and to bring people into an opportunity, but if you're not being real about the negatives as well, I think it creates a lack of trust for the long term, first of all, between you and your potential client, but it's also just being disingenuous because all of these business models, whether we're talking about Amazon as I do a lot or drop shipping or social media marketing or affiliate marketing, they all have downsides. They all have some level of risk. They all have a real factor of maybe it's not gonna go that well for you. Maybe you're not going to achieve it. A lot of that might be on you, but a lot of that is just other factors as well and not everybody succeeds. And many course providers like to brush this under the rug. They like to just say it's all upside, promise, 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 and not all there on the delivery. And that is more of a problem of marketing than the product. Next one has to do with who you're marketing to, and I think this one is a major, major disgrace, and it's just pretty shameful that people even say some of the things that I'm about to say, but a lot of people will offer these business opportunities, Amazon, whatever, you, I just named several of them, uh, to people that really cannot afford it. Like, they really cannot afford it, and I have seen this course sellers saying, uh, you can use PayPal credit and pay the whole thing in the six months or whatever that PayPal gives you or take out another credit card to put this course on it because this is the information that you need to change your life, which maybe it is. But 
I think it's fairly irresponsible to take somebody in debt in a very, very difficult situation and say, no, 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 what you need is to spend that thousand dollars on me for a course. I just don't think it's right to be targeting people in those situations and to say, put it, go a little bit deeper. You know, one step deeper is not gonna hurt. I just think it is, um, it's it's neglectful of, it, it's just, it's it's false hope. It's, um, and maybe it's not false hope. Maybe these, some of these people will succeed, but it is, I don't think it's ethical to be marketing in that way of, don't worry if you don't even have the money, just take out this other line of credit, you know, tell your grandma you'll pay her back three years from now. Maybe it's better to do that than to do the other, but um, I don't think, at least in the money making space, I don't think we should be targeting, um, I don't think we should be targeting people that just literally cannot afford it. And look, people that can't afford it will find it and that's okay. And some might choose to buy it and some might not, but that's not you telling them it's okay to go that step further and you should do this, 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 this to make it work for you at all costs. I think that is where it goes over the line. And it is a bit funny though, is that I'm sitting here thinking about how unethical it is to do that. And then to kind of think about the, the student loan crisis and thinking about how that's okay and thinking about how parents will force their kid to take on six figures of debt for a degree in whatever. Um, and universities will gladly take crazy fees. It, it is kind of funny to compare it to that world and just realize, oh, what's going on here maybe isn't that bad. You know, we're talking about maybe a thousand dollars compared to 40,000 or 150,000 or something like that. And yeah, it is interesting to kind of think about how big of a mess that is too, right? Okay, and the next is probably the biggest mistake and I can't even believe that this is a thing and this is one where maybe the solution is some kind of actual legal action and new regulations that affect this because this one should not exist. And this is that a lot of these make money opportunity courses in particular are literally targeting people under the age of 18. And I don't think anybody talks about this or anybody points out that this is happening, but should that be okay? I don't know. Should you be able to convince a 15 year old, a 17 year old, a 13 year old to invest in your opportunity? It just seems very, very, very shady. And unfortunately, I think a lot of the courses in the YouTube space, at least the ones that kind of blow up in our community, there are other communities of courses where there's not nearly this, um, this sense of scamminess and this sense of just negativity because it's just more of a professional thing. And I think that's where courses need to go. It's just this more professional thing. There's a professional teacher offering it in a professional way. Why is it not that way? Why, are, is, why is it instead this crazy attention grab thing and looking super cool and attracting these young kids to get into this course? And I think I think that's a major problem. Again, back to the way it's being marketed and who is being targeted. This one is on the who is being targeted side. And should you be able to market to people under the age of 18? I mean, aren't there like laws against that? Maybe the cutoff there is 13, like for ads for toys on TV and all of that stuff. And I believe there's been some changes on YouTube even recently about if your video is targeting minors or not. And I haven't seen a word of it in our space, in the make money online space, but I think a lot of the content, free or paid, is targeting minors. And unfortunately, this is linked into the first point of overpromising and not talking about the negatives. These go hand in hand because I will give my own example on this. On my channel, I would like to think I've always been fairly transparent and I've always tried to talk about the ups and the downs and not just paint this amazing picture. And by default, I've noticed in the analytics of my channel, the younger crowd drops off and I don't have that young of an audience. On average, my audience is older than me and me at age 27, I'm already like an old guy in terms of the YouTube creator community. A lot of these YouTube business people are much younger than me and probably look at me like a freaking boomer or whatever. So yeah, this is one I think a lot about. I really try to not target children with business content. If for free stuff, I think if I can be a positive influence on 
kids, fantastic. I think that's great. But I would never, I have never tried to sell somebody under the age of 18. That's just the way I feel about it. I've had calls with people when I've done some free call things and people are interested. And I am just brutally honest in saying like, you probably shouldn't do this yet. You should think about it. You should partner with somebody. You should, you know, get your feet wet with reselling or just, you know, do things that don't require such risk and such investment. And another huge problem, and this is why so many courses have massive refund rates and hordes of people making videos about how the creators are terrible people and, and all of that. And that can come down to the way it's marketed as well, points I already touched on and who it's marketed to. But this is that so many of them are only concerned with the marketing and they're not even thinking about the product and they're not even thinking about what they have crafted and what is their offer and what is the person getting. They're just thinking about how do I get more and more and more people in? How do I find the right ad? How do I catch the attention? How do I convince people this is an incredible opportunity? How do I get you to say yes right now? How do I get you to overcome your obstacles and your fears and all of that and get you on a payment plan and put it on a credit card and all of that? And they're never thinking about what is the product that I'm offering? Does it solve something for the customer, the client, the person investing in this course? Does it offer what they are hoping to get? Does it, does it answer what they think they are paying for? And that's something I, t I personally take a lot of pride in is the fact that I have very low refunds. And I think that's due to the the expectation not being so out of match with what they're getting. It's not like I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to paint the expectation so incredibly high and then just forget about the rest. I'm trying to be real and real. And I think that that comes through and hopefully you're not seeing any ridiculous claims or, or whatever, like you're seeing against a lot of people. And I think it's just because the way it's target, the, who they're targeting, the way it's positioned, the lack of focus on the product, um, targeting kids and just making it this big, crazy fanfare situation, which is, you know, what if, what if colleges tried to sell you the way courses tried to sell you? I mean, that'd be absolutely like the biggest joke on the planet. And why is it so unprofessional? I mean, we're talking about making money. We're talking about changing your life. I mean, these are like real things. These are not things that you should be sold the way like a freaking like action movie is sold or whatever, like a, I don't know, with the Lamborghinis and all of that. And sure, I do like cars myself, but I, you guys know what I'm talking about. You, I don't even need to go further. But yeah, if you are somebody that is considering offering a course or you're just aware of this whole situation, I hope you found value in this. I hope you implement this. I hope you spread these messages because I think this is where the problem lies and I'm optimistic about the course market. I think it's here to stay. I think it's maturing. I think it has a long way to go. Maybe some way of having the, the, um, the teacher be more, uh, financially incentivized by the student success. There's going to be new platforms, new ways of doing this in the future. And it's just early. We're just early. So we're seeing the very messy times. This is like on Amazon when everything was just the, the wide open West and it was just this crazy land grab opportunity. That's kind of where we're at with courses right now. And it's going to settle down and a lot of people are going to fall out of the game. And what's going to be left hopefully is just a calmer, more respectable, legitimate landscape. And if you watch this far and you're not subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be early when my videos get posted and actually see them. Uh, smash the like button and leave comments on this video. Those things really help the YouTube algorithm overlords who really need to bless this channel. <laughs> and feel free to follow me on Instagram as well for just a little more of what I'm up to in my everyday life. And for those of you that are curious about the course from an Amazon perspective, or just from maybe seeing how I'm positioning it, you can check out the course in the description as well. If, it, if that's a fit for you, if that's something you want to just see what I'm doing with it and see you soon. Damn. That's big boy.